to you, New York. All right. Now, earlier tonight, President Obama he gave his farewell speech in Chicago, and he focused on race relations. Let's take a look at that. After my election, there was talk of a post-racial America. And such a vision, however well intended, was never realistic. I've lived long enough to know that race relations are better than they were 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, no matter what some folks say. But we're not where we need to be. And all of us have more work to do. If every economic issue is framed as a struggle between a hardworking white middle class and an undeserving minority, then workers of all shades are going to be left fighting for scraps while the wealthy withdraw further into their private enclaves. Divide the rich versus poor, black versus white, old versus young, the politics of division of the Democratic Party. Now, the president let tonight focusing on race, he refused to address the tragic epidemic of violence that has devastated mostly African Americans in his hometown, an issue that has only gotten worse since he took office in 2009. President Obama, let's look at the facts, let's look at the numbers. In just the first 10 days of 2017, 12 homicides have been reported, 81 people have been shot so far, and last year, alone a startling 762 homicides perpetrated in the Windy City in Chicago. Now, sadly, since January 2009, the month President Obama took office, Chicago has been ravaged 3,929 murders. So why? For almost eight years, has President Obama failed so miserably to curb violence in his own hometown? He barely mentioned it during the course of his presidency. Joining us now, radio talk show host James T. Harris and New York City mayoral candidate for the Democrats. He may end up being the first Democrat I support. Vote for Bo for mayor. I have a Bo pin. How are you? Very good, Sean. Now, we brought murders down. New York's a bigger city, far less violence. Yeah. Because you had a mayor that took a lot of heat from a very liberal news media, but said, we're sending all the cops into those areas that have the most crime, and we're going to save lives, stop and frisk, saved lives, many minority lives. Absolutely. When you had Giuliani, you had Bloomberg, they were the mayors that got it done. Now, this other guy, de Blasio's trying to take Big the Bird, credit for it. Big Bird. What do you call He's Big trying Bird? to take the credit. And he's the one that put the environment in New York sh City when they were demonstrating outside, closing the Brooklyn Bridge. What do you want? Dead cops when do you want them now fry them like bacon in a roll whatever they were saying and he let this thing go on and on he put the environment where that creep from Baltimore came into New York and assassinated those two cops when they were sitting in a car it's he has the blood that's why every cop turned it back when he went into the hospital and now he's trying to take the credit for the reduction in crime the credit has to go to the men and women of the New York City Police Department as far as Chicago goes I saw Rahm Emanuel standing there that's he good. should have been back out on the the street there directing and stopping Seriously. the homicides that are going on. You got a little girl sitting on the stoop, shot in the head, a five year old little girl going to school. This doesn't stop there. This is the dirty little secret. This is like with our vets, with our 20 vets dying every day. These things have to be dealt with. And the murders in New York, in New York City are down, thank God, but Chicago go, is up tremendously. You know, James T. Harris, um, you know, the president talked about race a lot tonight, and he talked about the incendiary divisions in the country, and I would argue he was one of the most responsible, but he would insert himself from the beginning of his presidency. The Cambridge police acted stupidly. Michael Brown, Ferguson, Missouri, Freddie Gray, Baltimore, Maryland, Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman. He was a four-time loser, and as an attorney, he rushed to judgment. No evidence, no facts, no due process for anybody, and he was wrong every time. Why didn't he focus on those numbers, nearly 4,000 killed in his own home city? Why did he focus rather on cases he ended up being wrong about that had a big racial component? Because he couldn't, because his progressive policies would fail. Instead of inserting himself, I wish President Obama would have inserted, you know, his family. Uh, in the last eight years, have marriages increased in Chicago? In the last eight years, have abortions decreased in the black community? In the last eight years, have we seen more uh, Americans of African descent uh, uh, graduate from high school? Have we seen less of them be incarcerated? The real problem in Chicago and across America, Sean, really, is the breakdown of the family. If you had strong, intact families, I truly believe we would not see anywhere near the violence that we're experiencing James in cities Harris, like Chicago. This is just a fact. In the eight years of the Obama presidency, African Americans, we have 
more African Americans out of the labor force, in poverty, on food stamps. I've given these statistics regularly. Why? Why, did, why was he unable because, to fulfill that promise? Because in order to do that, he would have to talk about the uh, black community's slavish devotion to progressive policies that have destroyed them since uh, great government, since, uh, since the 1960s, the Civil Rights Movement and the War on Poverty. These policies have done more to destroy <laughs> not just the black community, but the culture as a whole since they've been implemented. You know, you know, Sean, this president, he's a very articulate man. He had the opportunity for the last eight years to bring us all together, to break down these. I think race relationships now are at the worst that Paul, I've seen them in the last that. 10 years. We, with this Black Lives Matter phony nonsense, all they wanted to do is divide, and all they want to do is bring violence. He brings Black Lives Matter in, into the White House. I mean, let's not divide. He was the first black president. He could have brought us all together. What he did was divide, starting with Trayvon, and on and on and on with every issue. But then we have cops that were killed. That poor woman that was shot in Orlando, African-American cop that was gunned down. Just the and, other day. And, and, and I mean, Monday. these are cops out there putting their lives, those five heroic cops in, in Dallas. We all had tears in our eyes, real tears, about their families. They were just they trying were to let... They targeted for assassination. And they were trying to let these people demonstrate peacefully, and they were gunned down. And I mean, the outrage in this country well, is... is that is, raises, James, another the other question, and Bo brought it up earlier, and that is the Black Lives Matter group. I mentioned the four high-profile race cases that he inserted himself into as an attorney and as the president. I think it was unwise, especially without due process or evidence being presented. But then he invites a group that is on tape chanting pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. I mean, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? How do you possibly justify the association as somebody that says he wants to be a racial healer and, and associating yourself well, yeah, with that. you're supposed to be a racial healer. We, the, the argument was that you're going to be the great uniter, not the great divider. But you know, with the progressive movement, we've already talked about it ad nauseum. It, it is to divide. It is to divide and conquer. And the race card has always been an easy card to play. Instead of talking about the issues that are at the heart of the problem, which I just mentioned, the family, what we do is we start to look at other, uh, uh, we look at uh, other areas like gun control. We'll look at other excuses. And the, and the fact of the matter is, when you have Al Sharpton as your race czar, uh, you, you can pretty much understand what the design is. It is to create turmoil. It is to create chaos. And that's what we have seen on blast for the last uh, four or five years of the Obama administration. You know, one of the things, if we really care about the African-American community, we have two things to do. We need to go to cities like Chicago, and but we need to clean up the violence. Well, the second thing is, the federal government, we spend more per capita, nearly $11,900 per student on average around the country per year. Mm. And we have the worst education rates, reading, mm. writing, science, math. We are, you know, 19, 24, 25th, respectively, in all these different topics. How could we spend more money and have a big failure and no urgency to fix the problem and let local communities have that money and they make those decisions. With education, they knock the charter schools. Look at I'm for education, whether it be charter schools or public schools. I want the child to be able to read and to read and write when they get out. Also, the jobs. What has he done with jobs in eight years? You know, when, when you give a young man a vocational job, he's a mechanic, he's a plumber, he's a, a carpenter, at least he's got a job in the morning. We did nothing with that for eight years. He didn't do anything for jobs. The black community should be outraged of this last eight years. He's done nothing. And it, it's just, it, it, to me, to listen to him tonight, he speaks so fine. Yeah. He speaks so well. But what did he do? All right, Bo, James, thank you both for being with us. Appreciate thank it. You. And joining us.